Just look at our advertising industry. So understand one thing. You have all the rights. So I knew I was not a criminal. I knew that long ago. And like Thoreau, when I went to prison, I didn't feel fear. And I, I looked at the bars and I said, well, this is a dark age we're in, that's all. What can I do? Thoreau said the same thing. He said, I never felt any, anything except, uh, uh, you know, that I can't communicate with my fellow townsmen. Well, let's get back to some things now that are more germane to Armenians. Um, still connected with the Ninth Amendment, I promised uh, uh, Mr. Rafi Kovanisian that I would mention this in the speech, that Armenia has a unique opportunity, I think, to lead the world. A little country like Armenia, lead the world. That's historic. By putting into its constitution the Ninth Amendment of the American Constitution and making it active, not like ours, which has never been used. Now, Armenia could lead the world in, in rights and democracy and freedom. But you've got to avoid corruption, which I think is a problem there. <laughs> but certainly, your government must have enough courage to put the words in the Constitution of Armenia. I don't think so. But I hope, I hope, and hope is a universal liar. I wish you would do that, because then uh, you've got to get rid of also your theocratic government. The church has got to lose some of its influence. I remember once when I was at a uh, show, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the speaker, when I was a kid, I didn't understand much of it, but I studied a little Armenian, so I and it's really quite a beautiful language. And uh, I was talking to the dead Irish daughter, and uh, she said, uh, she was very, you know, uh, very both faithful Christian. I looked at her screen in the face and I said, so you all, all, all men are your brothers? Yeah. I looked at her and I said, is a Turk your brother? She couldn't answer it. You know, I, I felt bad because she was frustrated and, and couldn't, didn't know how to handle it. But you see, the, we're living in lies. This is the point. We're not realists. Let's Armenians get realistic. We're a small country. We don't matter much in the world today. What we're becoming is a colony of the American Empire. And this is because America is developing an empire. You know, that's part of the, part of the policy. I, I suppose, now I may not hit some of the topics if you want me to mention, but that will come in the question and question and answer period. <clears throat> some more points to bring out. Um, the, the Patriot Act, I was in prison when that was uh, promulgated. I knew immediately it was, it was uh, unconstitutional. It was a word-for-word -word copy of the Nazis Enabling Act. Which enabled the Nazis to take care, to go ahead with their program of destruction and, and uh, genocide. And we have it now in America. The Germans also, the Nazis also had a Homeland Security Act 
which was called Heimat Sicherhof in Germany. Same words as we have. We're following in the Nazis. I already knew we were becoming totalitarian. She warned us we're sliding into totalitarianism, but it's a different kind. It's not the raucous, uh, 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 noisy to uh, to uh, totalitarianism of uh, delinquent youths. It's more genteel, soft, cryptic. But it's happening. We are now at a period in American history of what is the antithesis of democracy. Plato said, the following fathers knew it, that perpetual warfare is a sure and is a sure and certain way to kill democracy. And that's what we have. America is the biggest warmongering nation in history right now. First, we started with the Indians. That was easy. We could wipe them out. And then we started shenanigans, like the uh, Mexican War that uh, Thoreau went to jail for. Because he said, he said if the American people were aware of this, they would never, they would never allow it, the Mexican War. Because, because President Polk was suspected of having provoked the Mexicans to attack us so that we could have the public behind us when we go to war. Doesn't that sound familiar? The same thing happened in World War II. I was a 13 year old in 1941. And when I read what the Americans, what Roosevelt, was demanding of the Japanese, I said, well, I would fight too, rather than willingly go back to the Dark Ages. They had to give up their military industry, go back to farming, pull all, all their troops out of the lands they conquered, all out of China, pull them back. That was a sure invitation for Japan to attack us. And we knew they were going to attack us because we had broken their code. We knew when they were going to leave Japan, when they were going to hit Pearl Harbor. We knew that. And we made sure, Roosevelt made sure, that the Pacific was cleared of all ships so the Japanese had a clean road. You might say, how do you know this? Well, read a book out by uh, Judge Napolitano of New York. It's a new book just out. Lies your government told you. That's how we got into World War II because Roosevelt wanted us to get into the war against Germany. That was the enemy. And he used it because Japan and Germany had been united by treaty. So he knew that if he could provoke the Japanese to attack Pearl Harbor, the American people who were against the war before that who said, keep us out of war. And Roosevelt lied several times, saying, your son will not send your boys to another war. He lied. He knew he was going to do it. World War I, I ran across this, and I understand it's part of the, part of the congressional record. Churchill supposedly said in 1936, that England was ready to make peace with Germany in April of 1917. And then what happened? America entered the war. Kept it going for another several million dead. And eventually the formation of Nazism and communism, all the bad stuff. America is a duplicitous country and a very amoral one. 